Well, 28 minutes to the top of, of the hour, and we're still discussing matters to do with uh, corruption. And my guest this morning is Alvin Mutebi uh, from the National Economic Empowerment Dialogue and Research and Advocacy at uh, Anti Coalition. And uh, we are discussing uh, here. And uh, before we went into the break, there was an aspect of the variations of results from the investigations. Uh, from the various institutions of government that, uh, of course, fight corruption. Now, I've been starting on that uh, particular point. Mm. I mean, because uh, these are the these are the institutions that have varying reports, and uh, these are the very institutions that you're planning uh, to coordinate with and join a forefront. And already, the results that are backed show a difference in some sort of probably the methods of investigation or anything. So. I'm trying to understand, using from that perspective, before being part of an institution, saying that institution X, let's uh, unite, how far have you gone in terms of getting to understand their core beliefs and what de determines them? What, why are they doing what they are doing? You know, um, for the institutions, yeah. I would say their core belief is combating corruption. That's it. Because all the institutions, you will find that they have that aspect of corruption somewhere, yeah. anti-corruption somewhere, state house anti-corruption, state house investors protection. So you will find that protecting yeah. investors, in, you know, state house health monitoring, you know, issues of health. Then you will find that the inspectorate of government inspection, and uh, you find the criminal investigation, criminal investigation. You will find that uh, director for public prosecution, yeah. public prosecution. Then you find that the anti-corruption court, anti-corruption. But they so, don't seem to display. Uh, so you, you find that they all have that exactly, anti, you know, that, anti, that, that but, relation to. to but to but the results, what they do really displays what is the, at the core belief in terms of uh, influence. Yeah, what they do, I would say, I would say that not mm. depict so much mm. to me. They don't depict so much to the expectation of the people or the expectation yes. from their mandate. From that, yes. Because now we would find that uh, what we are seeing from some institutions is really not substantively related to what they are they were established for. Uh, you you find an institution uh, more into uh, press conferences, <laughs> more into <laughs> breakfast meetings, meetings yes. you know, mm. more into uh, uh, round table discussions. Mm. Uh, and does a common man really want to hear that? You, you, you know, that's uh, preaching to the people who really, really understand it. You know, mm. the common man want to know that you mm. know what so and so has, you know, uh, was captured or some so and so was arrested just because of him or her participating in, you know, involving in corruption. In corruption. Then whatever, yeah. whatever other things happens, it, it, it doesn't matter to them as long as somebody was brought to account. But you look at our institutions that we have, how many people have they you know, brought to account? You look at the institutions that we have, how many cases have gone to their logical conclusion? Logical corruption conclusion. cases that have yeah. gone to their logical conclusion. Mm. So you look at things and then you ask yourself, do these people really understand the mandate that we are established for? Or is just you know, a hearsay that we are, you know, we are doing something yeah, in the war against corruption. corruption. You know, people want to see, citizens want to see tangible mm. results. That is citizens the want that to see that, you know what, so and so was you know, involved in this kind of matter, and this matter was uh, concluded. You know, not putting uh, cases before court uh, for a very long time. And then what I've also realized is that uh, our legal, legal regime, mm. uh, as far as uh, fighting corruption is concerned, concerned yes. it's not that much biting. It's not that much biting. In, in countries that I've been to, you find that if you involve yourself in corruption, one, uh, you lose your, 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 your position for, 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 for some good time. Mm. And then two, the penalties are very, very, very harsh, you know, very punitive. Yes. So, but here you, you, find that, uh, uh, you find that the legal regime we have here is more or less of, uh, uh, I would say, not that much punitive. It's just to you know to restore somebody you know mm. the, 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 it's more of a rehabilitate, rehabilitate rehabilitative exactly, yes. you know they will say ah you know now that thing you know they are you did a B C D I mean we've seen ministers mm. I mean if you're a minister and you have a corruption case before court 
And then you continue serving in the government as a minister, honestly. In nations with the world de developed, no, uh, honestly, uh, I mean, honestly, that you, you, that, you that, get arrested that, there. Then that that that, that that you know that that yes. that inched my mind. I was like, now me too. You look at such people and they continue, you know, occupying offices. In some countries, um, such people are thrown out and of the government exactly. immediately. You know, once you have a corruption case. You're thrown out of government immediately in some countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, yeah. I would suggest that let us have the reason as to why even this this vice of corruption is continuing is that we do not have examples of serious serious punishments, punishments to corruption. So if we had examples of serious punishments to corruption, somebody involved in corruption is arrested, assets taken away from him or her, and uh, you lose the job forever. Not this thing of saying that 10 years, you know, forever you're out of public service, forever you don't mm -hmm. apply anywhere in public service. Maybe if you want, go and do, go your, and public, do your, your, your private <laughs> business. <laughs> but you find that somebody, you have case, a case to answer, but still mm -hmm. you're, you're serving. Okay, if you have a case to answer, because now you're not corrupt until you're convicted, mm -hmm. but still, you withdraw, I mean, you leave office and then investigations take on. Mm. So, I mean, I don't really understand what, 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 what we are doing as a country as far as that is concerned. Concern. Because I've, mm. I've, I've seen our, our legal regime being a, a bit relaxed in that kind of perspective. And then mm. the, the, the other perspective is the, the area where we have quite a number of uh, uh, mushrooming institutions in this case of fighting corruption. Now that is another issue. So that's mm. that, that's where we are also having problems, whereby institutions are now not looking them, at themselves as uh, partners in the war against corruption, but they are looking at themselves as uh, uh, as competitors. And uh, I wouldn't expect institutions of government to look at themselves as competitors. competitors. So you'll find that a certain institution A is looking at institution B as its competitor. So at times. Uh, we, we, we will lose meaning or we will lose the, the focus because you will find that uh, institution A does not want to work with institution B just because they are thinking that maybe that institution is trying to, you know, to, 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 to take off, to take, take up off, the yeah. show. So, and that alone has, you know, uh, dragged and uh, affected the, 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 the implementation or the struggle in the fight against corruption. Now, on that note, uh, Alvin, I want to understand what sh what are the changes you feel needed at the individual, institutional, and societal levels in order to address corruption? What changes do you think? The changes that we really need to do is that, yeah. uh, one, we have to change our legal regime. We make it very much punitive in that whoever uh, behaves or whoever involves him or herself in corruption will feel the pain. Then two, mm. we also have to invest much more into capacity building of these uh, officers in these institutions to really understand their mandate and why, why they are there. And then also, uh, 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 three, we also have to, 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 to think of uh, having a collaborative mechanism. Collaborative in, mechanism. Yeah, mm. in, 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 uh, and as far as response is concerned. I will give a layman's understanding or a layman's the, uh, explanation. Mm. You saw what happened uh, when we had the locusts in, yes. in, 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 in Uganda. Mm. We realized that we had quite a number of agencies or institutions of government responding to just one issue, <laughs> the locusts. Yeah. We had the uh, Minister of uh, Agriculture responding, Minister of Internal Affairs, Minister of Defense, mm. and the Minister of Security. So you will find that we had confused and uh, uncoordinated kind of response to just one issue there. So conflicting roles. Yeah, so you, you, you find that we even lost a lot of money as a country in just responding to just a very small kind of, you know, idea which could have been, you know, mm. uh, taken on by the common people at the grassroots. So at times we really need to have uh, a coordinated approach towards the, the war against corruption, mm. whereby if we say that it is the IG uh, IGG or IG responding, mm -hmm. we we all r rally behind uh, one institution and be like, okay, for this case, let us give this institution full support, mm -hmm. and uh, we see that this issue gets out of the way. Not saying that this is responding to this issue, and then uh, tomorrow you will see the issue also being taken up maybe by state house and corruption unit. So at times you will find that. We will not have that kind of substantive kind of efforts to to, you know, to wipe it out. 
Uh -huh. Don't you uh, don't you think uh, I'm mentioning that uh, it's better when you have one institution because uniting together, I get within that unity, there there are still uh, aspects that explain you individually as an institute. Still provides room for division. You know, the reason as to why we might have uh, mm. parallel institutions doing mm. the same thing uh, would be to widen the scope and also to narrow down the space mm. that uh, uh, the corruption people, uh, the corrupt people play. So if we narrow down the space, that will mean that mm -hmm. we will have no ways or excuses uh, whatsoever. So for example, if you have an institution like Financial Intelligence Authority, mm -hmm. it will be more into you know, financial intelligence and everything like that. Uh, if you have an institution like, let me say, health monitoring unit, mm. it will be more into uh, monitoring health. the health sector and how things work in the health sector. So other than having maybe one institution, mm. because that will be a bit uh, challenging yeah. and it will be a huge mandate of if it's that one institution, institution. Yeah, okay. of that institution to, you know, to, 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 to play within the, 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 the terrain okay. to make sure that they, they wipe it out. And then too, you will find that uh, uh, um, you will find that corruption. Uh, you cannot say that you're going to mandate it only to one institution because corruption has diverse di dimensions, and uh, uh, the face of corruption has also changed. It's like the actors or the corrupt people have changed the ways of you know uh, taking the, it, the, the elements of syndicated corruption. Yeah. You know the elements of transactions which would need maybe financial intelligence, intelligence authority to play. The elements of now asset recovery and asset declaration, which would need maybe the leadership court tribunal to, 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 you know, to take on, and the IG. And then the elements of, uh, the elements of real corruption, mm. where by now you have uh, embezzlement, you know, nepotism and others, uh, which would really need uh, uh, maybe the IG to, you know, to, to, to play. So the elements of audit issues, Related to corruption, which would need somebody with an institution with a mandate of audit, audit. to really, you know, go in deep into the understanding of such things, and then the elements of prosecution, mm -hmm. which would need maybe an institution that had the mandate to prosecute, to go into pro prosecution, and the elements of court, you know, where we would need maybe a timely and a fair hearing, mm -hmm. so we would need. Uh, the special court, mm. like the the, 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 the anti-corruption court, to you know to take up that kind of uh, mandate. So you'll find that uh, having a one institution doing all that, it will be a bit challenging and mm. it will be a bit uh, wide for for, for for government to to accommodate. But it's better you have parallel institutions, but well coordinated, so you can have a forum that brings these institutions all together mm -hmm. at a forum. Like what I, I talked about, the interagency forum. Interagency forum. Yeah, we also have the heads of institutions uh, forum, where the heads of institution of all the anti-corruption agencies meet mm. and discuss and say, you know, look here. Actually, that I've seen it happen in this year's uh, uh, anti-corruption activities, where heads of institutions have now realized that we need to come together and you know, uh, talk about certain things. Then at the at the grassroots, mm. let us empower the citizens to really understand their mandate as citizens. Because the Constitution under Article 17, mm. it gives every citizen a mandate to fight, not even to fight, to combat corruption, corruption in its nature. So let the citizens understand their role and their mandate as far as fighting corruption is concerned. And then uh, we've also realized that there is need to, to translate anti-corruption documents in a language that the citizens that understand. can really understand. For, for example, where Actually, we've been, uh, okay. uh, for example, where we've been, mm -hmm. we've, uh, there's what we call the Auditor General's recommendations to, towards local governments. Mm -hmm. But you find that the such recommendations, the, the language of the Auditor General is very you know, complex. complex. Yeah, Absolutely. somebody cannot really understand it. So we've tried as much as possible to simplify these uh, recommendations in that a layman can really understand that District A was given this much money to do ABCD activities. And in this much money, they did not do maybe ABCD. Oh, they, did, oh, yes. they, 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 they did not do A and C. Maybe they did B and D. So uh, the one I will ask, why was A and C not done? <laughs> so 
And that we've seen that we've, you know, in one way or the other, empowered the citizens to really understand uh, their mandate and their responsibility as citizens towards uh, 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 engaging themselves to ask for accountability, I mean demand for accountability, mm -hmm. and also uh, promoting transparency at the, at, at the local level. And uh, citizens need to be uh, empowered, citizens need to be trained and uh, taught about the various referral pathways mm. in, in, in as far as reporting corruption is concerned. concerned. And then mm. also the institutions of government should lower down a bit to the citizens. Because there are some institutions of government that uh, I've seen when they are just up there at the national level, they're doing national activities. Yes. But at the grassroots, people don't feel, you know, don't feel these institutions. That's the key. So That's we really key. want to have, if you, are, if you are an institution of government, People really want to feel you, you know, um, we have had, uh, uh, we've had of, uh, citizens at the grassroots complaining about, you know, hybrid procurement, mm. you know, we've had people talking about elements of, uh, you know, drugs missing in hospitals, elements of, uh, you know, schools not being that much rehabilitated. So, but they do not know which agency to report to these report. cases to. You will find that few people know about the IGG, Few people know yes. about the uh, the PPPDA, so you find that uh, these institutions they have not, you know. So they have not been made. Yeah, they, they have not trickled down to the to, to the, the people to, to, to the people, and uh, that has also created a gap. Maybe if I may ask uh, a, a little bit, uh, you're talking about institutions in, in the barriers, and you mentioned something about each district losing about twenty six billion. Yes. Then, how far have you gone in terms of spreading those activities across the districts? Because I also feel that could be a little bit of a challenge. This, because Uganda is a big country, mm. about uh, so many districts, every yes. day new districts have been created. Mm. But uh, spreading, how are those institutions, or oh, they are only best here in the central? The institutions have uh, tried, I would say, mm. to, to spread, because mm. now some institutions have regional offices. Regional offices. Regional offices okay. in, in each and every region of the country. Because that's when they can reach the yeah, citizens that's on the ground. they can reach the yeah. citizens on the ground. But you find that in the activities, that the, the, the few activities that we've uh, uh, spearheaded at the regional level, you yeah. find that these regional representatives at times don't even come into these regions. Okay. I expect for a few uh, okay. agencies that you know Okay. come up to participate in these activities. So it becomes a bit challenging whereby even the regional institutions, people don't really know these regional institutions. They don't even know that okay. these institutions are available. available, yeah. available. So you find that somebody will tell you that, you know what, I'm traveling to Kampala to go to the IG office. But in their region, there is, there is a, a representative. They are, yeah, there is a representative or they are a regional office, office. fully pledged with mandate and capacity to, you know, to handle cases of the people. But do the fact that you know, these people are not aware of these institutions, at times they don't even come to them. And then we've, we've, we've also seen a, a gap in the protection of uh, whistleblowers, you know, okay. since, since people that report cases of corruption. So you'll find that somebody reports, but tomorrow, uh, somebody will receive a call from someone and be like, you know what? I was told that you reported me about it. intimidation. Yeah, so a lot we've, we've not protected this, so we really need to. And that's the reason as to why citizens are not maybe that much involved in the war against corruption. Exactly, there is that because, fear. Be, because they fear, there's fear for their protection. They'll be like, mm -hmm. now if I report about this case, will I, how, how safe am I going to be? How, how protected am I going to be? Won't I have issues or some, some challenges at the end of the day? So we really need to have a mechanism of protecting these people. And then um, I've also realized a gap in uh, bringing the young people on board because we, we feel that the young people are the majority in our country. country. But yeah, yeah. In, when, as far as uh, the discussion on corruption or the discussion about corruption is concerned, you find that there is a gap whereby the young people are not that much involved. involved yeah. And uh, when we involve them, when we bring them to panels to talk about, just to give us poems, uh, just you know to to to, to attend They're just attending, attending you know pass we call them passive participants but we have policies you know we have decision making how many young people have been brought on board as far as decision making is concerned, concerned. as far as policy making is concerned at at at, at, at both local subnational and national level you find that these young people are not involved but they are the ones that subscribe to the key service delivery points. They're the ones that will go to the hospitals, the public hospitals, 
They're the ones that will use the, 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 the schools, the public schools, okay. you know, and they really want to know. They really want to get informed. And actually, the young people are the ones that report these cases of cases, corruption. Yeah. So uh, we really need to also bring them on board and uh, make them understand their mandate as citizens. And then uh, the other issue that I also wanted to comment about is the issue of service delivery, because mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of corruption in service, service delivery. delivery yeah. And uh, to me, I was saying that uh, uh, we lack the aspect of uh, patriotism, because you cannot tell me that you are a minister in charge of a certain service. Mm. Let me say, uh, let me just give a general example. Let me say you're a minister in charge of uh, health. But none of uh, your children or your, you know, your, 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 mm. your, your household goes to the public health facilities. Or even you, the minister yourself, you don't... They don't attend the public yeah, you, don't, you don't subscribe to these public, public, public facilities. So how are you going to wipe out the element of corruption in a service that you are mandated to offer? So you'll find that it will be challenging because they won't feel the challenges that people go through in accessing these services. Because one, you're not subscribing to them. And then two, okay. I would also suggest that let all public servants subscribe to public services. Because with that, they will feel the pain. The they will feel the pain that the, the common person goes through in accessing various service delivery points. And there, maybe something will be done. So in, in, in some countries where I've been to, um, it's actually a standing order that once you become a public servant, yeah. all the services that you subscribe to have to be, majority of the services are supposed to be public services. Like these major, major, major services like health, education, transport, okay. and others. They, have, they, have, they ought to be public services. But you find that majority of our you know, duty bearers do not attend to these public services. Attend to those public services. I've been to districts whereby even the, 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 the district officials do not sleep or stay in the, the districts that they are, they, are, they, are, they are allocated to. You'll find somebody is allocated to Ruka district. I'm just giving an example. Somebody yeah. is allocated to Ruka district, but that person is staying in Jinja, and you are the in charge of a certain hospital in Ruka. So whenever we have an emergency, how are you going to handle that, that emergency when you are as far as ginger, ginger. from Ruka. So at times, the, the, we lack this element of being patriotic in the way how we handle our offices and the way how we deliver our services. Mm -hmm. And we also term that as corruption because you failed to attend to your mandate. I mean, uh, the IG was, at, was having the, the, the meeting she was in, the one that you've been playing. Yeah. It was uh, a meeting with the service commission, the district service commission. But you find that the district service commissions, majority of the people on the district service commission do not come, do, do, do not stay in these districts. So how are you going to fight corruption in a district where you're not staying, in a district where you're not even attending to the public services, which you, you which you are in charge of? So it will become more difficult as long uh, unless we come up as citizens as Ugandans and we start owning our services, our services that we intend to give our people. There, uh, we will have a step forward in the fight against corruption. That reminds me of a statement the IGG mentioned some time back. I think he had gone to... Uh, what Enemies. Is it? Yes, mm. about, uh, you see, when we don't report elements of corruption, uh, we are the ones who suffer. For mm. them, when they fall sick, they will definitely uh, get the best medication. Do you really think that was necessary of how to say that? Yet there is, we've been mentioning the aspect of protecting the whistleblowers, which is not uh, effective. There is no security for the whistleblowers. Um, the IGG says, you know, when this happens, uh, for us, I'll just call, I'll go into a chopper and fly out. No, he was trying to, she was trying to show the people that you people, you're not serious about what you're doing. Because, I mean, some of us, are actually, she was, she was trying to show that some of the people that, um, I would say some yeah. of the people that are, that are intend to, to, you know, to be in these kind of things to deliver the services to the people, for them, they have the privileges. They have the privileges. So if you don't play your mandate well, it will come to you, not these uh, key duty bearers, because for them, they have the privileges. So she was trying to show them that you yeah. play within your mandate, work towards your mandate very well. Because, I mean, if you don't do that, it, will, it won't affect me. It will come to you. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you do not work upon the road, 
Me, if my, my, if my car has an issue, I will just take it to a Lucimbi's garage and things will be worked <laughs> upon. If, if, my, if I fall sick, mm. I'll get a chop and, you know, they take me out. It's to you if, you, if your hospital is having issues, none of my business. Me, government has a, a responsibility over me okay. to, to, you know, to, be, to be taken care of. To be of. taken off. If, if, if your schools are dilapidated, I mean dilapidated, mm. my children want to go to those schools. I will take them to international schools. Because, oh, okay. I mean, government gives me that gives kind me, of... Gives me that, that, that privilege. privilege. But then, too, I have an issue with that. If government scraps of that privileges to these people, we will see a difference. That is the icebreaker. We will, we will see a difference. Let the government scrap off these privileges from these people. Be like, for you to fly out of the country, there are some countries I've been to, for you to fly out of the country, actually, let me be honest, I've been to Rwanda. Mm. For you to fly out of the country in Rwanda, going for... For, 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 for medical attention. The medical review board of Rwanda has to be satisfied that this person in the whole of Rwanda, we do not have a health facility that will take care of this person. So we recommend him or her to fly to the country. For you to go for a, pub, a private school, they have to be satisfied that in your area where you're coming from, okay. a minister, mm. we do not have a public school that can accommodate you, which is very difficult. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> exactly two minutes to the top of the hour. I've been with Alvin Tebi uh, from the National Economic Empowerment Dialogue and the Research and Advocacy at the Anti-Corruption uh, Coalition. Well, thanks for being a part of today's edition. It's a Friday. Wish you a happy weekend. And definitely go be uh, go uh, reflect about how the week has been and prospect for a better week. Till next week. Good morning. Mm -hmm.